Hello and welcome to Lights Out, your virtual campfire. I'm your hostess with the mostest ghosties, Sylvia Schultz. One of the great things about being an author is getting to meet other authors. And when those authors are also into the paranormal, well, that just makes any afternoon fly by. I had the pleasure of spending such an afternoon with Ophelia Julian, who writes young adult supernatural suspense fiction. Join us as we talk ghosts and things that go bump in the night and go lights out. Ophelia Julian grew up in a haunted house on the near north side of Chicago. The youngest in a family of avid readers, she can't really remember not being able to read, but she remembers when she started to write. By sixth grade, she had set her sights on writing books when she discovered that the library didn't have as many ghost stories on the shelves as she wanted. She was also naive enough to think she could make her own stories end the way she wanted them to end. When she doesn't have her nose, not to mention the entire rest of her head, in a book, she writes and seeks out the company of others who also like to write. She enjoys the spark and excitement of sharing ideas, plots, quotes, and anything else having to do with the process of writing with like-minded people. Ghosts, phantoms, the paranormal, and the unexplained have been a lifelong interest, and she continues to pursue that interest through both reading and writing. So it goes without saying that Ophelia and I have become good friends. I got to chat with Ophelia at a paranormal convention in the Quad Cities. Oh, yeah, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I am speaking with Ophelia Julian, who writes uh, young adult supernatural fiction. Yeah, yeah. and I, I heard you say yesterday that you grew up in a haunted house. Tell me about that. Yeah, I did. Um, my parents bought this house as a unique fixer-upper on the north side of Chicago when I was three. So we moved in when I was three. Mm -hmm. And um, as I got older, you know, you begin to realize that you're hearing children playing, except there weren't any kids there. Uh -huh. We would hear um, things would disappear, and then you'd look for them, and they'd turn up later, like five days later, in a very obvious place. Uh -huh. um, we heard a baby crying one night. And as I got older and stayed up later, I began to realize we had a cyclical haunting that started at about 10.30 every night and ended at about 1 o'clock in the morning. Oh, wow. And it would announce itself with furniture shifting and things like that in whatever room you weren't in. And if you went into that room, it would move to a different room. But it was there. And then my husband, when he married me, moved in our house while he was finishing grad school. Mm -hmm. He actually saw one. Wow. And um, there was a child once who was at our house for Thanksgiving dinner. When my mother called everyone to dinner, he said, what about the old lady by the fireplace? And there wasn't one. <laughs> so we had something in the house. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't realize how disturbed it was until I started sleeping at other people's houses and realizing that it didn't feel like my house. Because my <laughs> house always felt crowded and like someone was watching you. Oh, wow. Yeah. It was very strange. And I tried looking into it. The, someone told me about a thing called um, diedinhouse.com where oh. you can pay $11 and they will look up death records that occurred at your property. And <laughs> I they, heard about that. Yeah, they, they, I actually paid that $11 and I found people that, that didn't really match. But the thing was is that um, a friend of mine in college was in architecture. We, I told him what side of the house is more disturbed than the other. Uh -huh. And it went all the way out to the yard to the garage. This was a pretty big house because it was dated back to 1908. And we had a coach house apartment above the garage, which was a three car garage because mm. it fit a horse and buggy and that kind of thing. Sure. And so um, he walked around the building and he said, and he walked inside the garage and then he said, do you realize you've got a bricked up room there? And I said, no. And he said, look, he said, if you go up and look up through there, there's no window. But if you come on the outside, there's a window there. <laughs> and I said, we don't even have a staircase. We've always just used a ladder to the trap door. And he said, yeah, that, that blocked off part in your garage, that's the bricked up staircase. <laughs> so I don't know what that was about. I always think that whatever's in there would not have been recorded as a death. <laughs> I think there's something a little sketchy about that, but oh, no. we, we never found out. We never found out. You and know. you never unbricked it just mm -hmm. to see? No, no. He said, you want me to drill through that? And I was like, no. <laughs> I have to live here. You don't have to live here. So, um, yeah, we, we never found out. And after my mother moved to a new house, 
And the kids would get together and we start exchanging stories. She even admitted that she heard stuff. Oh, wow. But she never did while we were there. <laughs> yeah. See, that's the horror writer in me going, oh, just take one little brick out. Yeah, just right. Yeah. behind there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you would. Yeah, no, no. Thank you. <laughs> it, was, it was freaky. It was a freaky oh, house. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that kind of informed your writing later on. Yeah, because I started writing as a kid. I mean, like I was eight when I started writing my first stuff, and cool. um, I was living in that house. So I think that the idea of having something creepy hanging around you was just sort of natural. Wow. <laughs> sort of a given. Plus, I went to Catholic school for 13 years. That'll do it to you, hanging out with nuns. So, you know, <laughs> that's, that's, that's pretty sure. creepy. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cool. So have you continued having experiences when you've become an adult? Yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot of them happen periphery. Like my grandson, I believe, sees things. I know he sees things. But our house um, that we live in now is a really nice little ranch. And it's it was built in 1960, so it's not that old. But the weird thing about it is that when all of us were living there, meeting my two now adult daughters and our dog and our cats and everything else, we would have things like the doorbell ring when no one was there. Mm -hmm. The dog would respond to someone at the door when there was no one there. I mean, that's not unusual for dogs. The cat would sometimes react to things. And there was there was a feeling in the house that was, every now and then, was weird. So one time my daughters and I went to see someone who was a card reader and a psychic. And my younger daughter is the one who asked because I think one time she was out with a friend and Jim and I were going to be out late and she knew that. But she came home later than she should have with her best friend mm -hmm. and said, oh my God, I'm in trouble because every house, every light in the house is lit. And she said, my parents are back and they're going to kill me. And they came in and no one was in the house, but all the lights were on. So she asked the psychic card reader, what is up with my house? Is it haunted? And the woman, you know, she how they disconnect for a while and think. And she came back and she said, your house doesn't have a permanent haunting. Your house is like Grand Central Station and things pass through. Oh. And the way she said it just felt right. I mean, someone like ringing the doorbell, or we'd have things for a while. My grandson, who could see things, who can see things, um, talked for weeks about the big boy in his bedroom. Mm -hmm. And then it just went away. So it's, it's sort of like things pass through, but I don't know why. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. We're on old farmland, that much I know. But other than that, I don't, okay. I don't have any idea why. Yeah. <laughs> Just one of those way station places. Yeah, and I should ask wow. you this. You Have you written ghost stories? Yeah. 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 Did you ever notice that while you're writing, your house comes to life? When you're I'm, writing a ghost story? I'm, I'm no. oblivious. No. That's, somebody could be walking around behind me carrying their own severed head, and I wouldn't notice. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I should <laughs> probably pay more attention to that, but no, I've never really never noticed, noticed that. that. No. A friend of mine, who also Terry Reed, who I was recommending for you, yeah. um, she and I both write ghost stories, and we are both hyper aware when we're writing that the house comes to life. And <laughs> you could have just said it was my imagination, but my office used to be in a back room, and I would hear footsteps coming down the hall, oh. and I would hear cabinets open. I'd hear all kinds of things, and I would finally get to the point where I'd, I'd yell, "Would you please knock that off?" Because it was bothering me, and it would stop, and then start up again later. And I would have said, you know, people was like, "Yeah, yeah, whatever." And then one time Jim was home and I was working. And he was watching TV and I was in my office and he heard something and I heard something. He goes, what is that? And I said, that's what happens when I write. <laughs> that's why I only write during the day. You know, if you're out of town, I don't write anything, you know, because it just, it just starts happening. Yeah, so wow. yeah, definitely. I should pay more attention to that when I'm working on my next project. Yeah, you wow. never know what's going on. It's, <laughs> it's funny. really weird, yeah. yeah. But maybe that's from growing up where I grew up. You know, you're just kind of always listening for that. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> so, what was your aha moment? So you, you, you've got kind of a different take on this because you grew up with this sort of thing. Yeah. But what was your moment? What, what was the, the, the moment when you decided, yes, this is real, this is actually going on? What was, what was, the, what was the occasion that made you a believer? You know, probably when I was a kid. My older sister and I slept in the same bedroom, big family. And um, it probably was the night we heard the crying baby. Because it was summer and the air conditioning was on, all the windows were shut, and she woke me up and she said, do you hear that? And I listened and there was a baby and I was sobbing. It was crying like a hungry child or one that no one has picked up yet. Mm. And it kept going and going and going. It was going. kind of grizzling. Yeah, and okay. we, we went out into the hall and you couldn't hear it. But you came back in our bedroom and you could hear it just fine. And she was maybe, I was maybe 10, so that would have made her 13. Mm -hmm. And the thing was is that we learned later that the room we were sleeping in was the nursery. And so when we hear that, or we'd hear kids laughing, because we would, the sound of children playing, it was probably because that was their room. 
Wow. I don't know, I don't know what that was. <laughs> and yeah, and I realized, well, you can kind of connect it with something. And I never proved any of it, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and I did have a friend who spent the night once, and she said, I'm never sleeping at your house again. <laughs> you know, so I know it wasn't just me. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so tell me about your books. Okay. Um, Haunted, which is the first in my series, the Bridge and Park Cemetery series, was written as a one-off until everyone said, well, what happens next? <laughs> and the ending had meant to be the ending, but nobody got that, so now I'm writing this series about characters I never meant to write about. Fun. And more than one book. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of, kind of fun. But um, back in 1998 or 99, there was a horrific murder mass murder in a suburb close to mine. And what happened was, this woman was a single mother, she had three other children, and she was pregnant about eight and a half months with her most recent baby, with the father. And um, she was home alone, it happened, it might even happen during the day. But these people broke into her house, they killed her and killed her other children, except one who got away and ran out. And they cut the baby from her womb. She died. I don't know if the baby died. It was the first time I ever heard of a crime like that. Mm. And um, I started thinking about it. I couldn't forget that murder because they found the kid who ran away. These murderers did. They killed him in an alley mm. or a driveway or something a few blocks away. Mm. And they were all caught, which is great. But I remember thinking, what if that child had lived and didn't remember that his entire family had been murdered? And how would it affect him later when he does find out and finds out that his parents never told him. Mm -hmm. And what happened with Haunted was that I didn't take it from that character's point of view because I write young adult and this person is now an adult. But my two young protagonists who don't realize they have the abilities they do um, connect with each other and then find out they make each other stronger. So, um, and I ran that by David Youngquist and he said, yes, that's absolutely true. Cool. Two psychics can make each other stronger. So um, that, it was based on that and it's just taken off from there. Right on. So, yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. And we can find your books on Amazon. On Amazon. I'm exclusively with Amazon because I'm self-published okay. there. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. But you can also, because I'm select, you can also read them for free. Nice. You, know, you can borrow them. Yeah. If you're a Prime member, you can borrow my books for free. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Are there any other stories you want to share with us? Um, let me think about that. Yeah. You were telling me something yesterday. You said you were going to say something about the uh, your sister and the, the, the guy in the long coat and the top hat. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> my, <laughs> my sister's daughter-in-law. That's um, who it was, yes. Yeah, she would come in with her husband, my sister's son, and one night when they were sleeping, she woke up and she saw a man in her doorway who had a top hat on and a long dark coat. And it scared her because obviously this is not someone in the family. So she got under the blankets, but she decided she needed to look. And when she took the blankets down, he was standing over the bed, bending over her. So she screamed, woke her husband up. Nobody else ever saw this, but she saw him at least one more time in that house. And when she was there visiting, the, uh, the, the pull cords and the blinds would always knot themselves up. And my sister thought they were doing it, and they thought my sister was doing it just to get the strings off the floor. And they both realized neither of them were. So she wouldn't. My sister would untangle them, and they'd knot up as long as this this young woman was there. But when she'd leave, it wouldn't happen. And one time when she came back, it started happening again. She got to the point where when she was there without her husband, because his work schedule was crazier, and her family's still by us too. Mm -hmm. So she'd come home to visit, and she would stay at my sister's because her parents had done something with her room. I don't remember what. Uh -huh. And um, she got to the point where she would sleep with her lights on until my sister and brother-in-law came home if they were out, because mm. she couldn't stand. She couldn't stand it. She just she just always felt like there was something there. Mm. It eventually went away, but it was there for couple of years, I think, every time she'd visit. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Ophelia, and I hope you'll go out and find her books, since they are rooted in her own experiences. Please visit her at OpheliaJulienne.com or at OpheliaJulienne.blogspot.com. And that's J U L. I E N. Thanks so much for tuning in to this episode. Next time, we're going to learn how to do a little house cleaning of the spiritual sort. Join me the next time we go. Join me the next time we go. Lights out.